I'm Scott Allen Miller, and this is my life living in Leon, Nicaragua. Today, we are excited to announce that we just found out that they have broken ground on the new airport at Punta Huete. We have been looking forward to this. We mentioned it several months ago as a rumor that it had been soft announced that it was going to happen, but actually breaking ground and starting construction of the new airport is absolutely amazing. We're going to talk about that right after the bump. Currently, for all intents and purposes, Nicaragua has been living with only a single international airport of any note. Yes, there are a few really tiny airports that are allowed to operate and in theory can handle an international flight, but generally these only are handling charters and basically have all fallen by the wayside. There used to be an airport of some importance on the island of Ometepe. This has been completely shut down for a large number of years. There was an up and coming airport that was going to be, we thought, very exciting a number of years ago near San Juan del Sur, or actually close to the village of Tola in the Departmento Rivas, but within the expat enclave zone near all the big fancy resorts, and that was the Aeropuerto Esmeralda. That airport does technically still exist and can operate, but we see no flights going to it. It is basically just for chartered flights, and even that, it seems to be all but abandoned. Here in Leon, we have an airport in Sutiava, very close to me here, which we've been showing on the show from time to time. It is basically for crop dusters and a few other places like this. Little crop duster airports with basically nothing around them exist around the country. Although I think Leon, both because of its position and size of the city and condition of the airport and the fact that it is currently guarded and in use, it could open up relatively quickly if it had a terminal, is one of the best uh, and most likely to have something good happen to it in the future if there was some economic growth here in the country. So we're hopeful because with the new bus terminal going in directly across the street, it seems to be a strategic decision to make that airport a little bit more useful. Maybe I'm just hypothesizing and perhaps I'm just hopeful, but that is exactly what we would like to see here in Leon. But the big news is Punta Huete. So where is Punta Huete and what makes it special? Built by and for the Russian military for the purpose of being able to bring in heavy bombers to the region during the 1980s, Punta Huete is a massive runway up on the north side of Managua. Now, Managua is a departmento, not just a city. So we're talking about the departmento and inside the departmento is Lago Managua or Lago Xolitlan. On the northeastern side of that lake, there is a peninsula known as Punta Huete. That peninsula is basically empty. It's farmland with a few small villages on it, such as San Antonio. That area is absolutely perfect if you're looking for an out-of-the-way runway that's not that far from the capital, but no one's going to be just finding it to be in the way or anything. There's just not a lot of people out there, but it's surprisingly close, but the road goes by the top of the peninsula and doesn't come down into it. You have to take little back roads to come into the peninsula. So this is a very nice location to be putting a big airport. It actually makes an awful lot of sense, and it does have beautiful areas around it, so potentially this could cause some local growth in the Punta Huete area, we were we could be hopeful that that may happen and my personal goals here if i was to get my way is that the old ports that exist up there might be upgraded so that they could take passenger traffic it would be an amazing experience to fly into punta huete be able to go on a little tram or, or a little shuttle that takes you out to a port and then have a small boat that takes you across uh, lago xolitlan to the capital at managua dock at Salvador Allende, and you'd have this amazing introduction into the city in a way that the current airport does not. It's a really neat thing, and that's just if you're going to Managua. From there, we could hope that there would be nice shuttle services going out to Leon, Matagalpa, and other cities without having to go through the capital, which would make tourism in other cities other than Managua, Masaya, and Granada, as they currently are, a little bit more targeted. Punta Huete, because it was built as a major military runway in the 1980s, has the underpinnings of an, a runway that can take any size passenger plane, notably like 747s, which I realize are a bit old now, but things like that. So full-size passenger jets that currently cannot fly into the region would be able to be serviced at Punta Huete. This means that more international flights, longer distance flights and such could come into Nicaragua. Now, if you know what I'm doing currently, you know that this is something I'm super interested interested in right now, if we want to take a long distance flight, such as a Copa or a LATAM or an Avianca, and they're going to go beyond their regional hubs, 
we're stuck going to El Salvador or Costa Rica in order to get those flights. Or with Copa, sometimes we can take them out of Managua and hop to Panama. But even for that, it makes more sense to actually go all the way to uh, Costa Rica and then hop to Panama as we're doing right now. So the idea of having a new airport that can take longer distance flights that might connect us to South America and Europe without having to connect to the neighboring countries first is an amazing step and something that Nicaragua needs for a lot of reasons. Tourism is picking up, so being able to handle more direct flights is a big deal. Uh, they're limited by the size of the planes that are coming in, and to some degree, they're limited by the size of the airport at Managua, but that, in reality, is not a major concern. The airport is not at capacity. It could take more flights. It could operate more hours of the day, and as it is, it takes a lot of people in the middle of the night, but it is an old airport and certainly not a showcase to tourists coming into the country. If you're flying into one of the two major airports in Costa Rica, for example, in SJO and Liberia, these airports are big and beautiful and modern. And while Managua has done a lot to upgrade, it still feels like a decently old airport when you go through it. So it doesn't have this incredibly inviting feel. But Punta Huete, if what we're seeing in the projections from the government are real, looks like it's going to be an absolutely stunner of an airport with beautiful architecture and design. And they have the space to do it. So And, and so many infrastructure projects are underway that we're really hopeful that this is going to come to fruition. And of course, people were super doubtful when we said, yeah, there's a new bus terminal coming into Sutiava. Everyone's like, yeah, that's government. Government's promise and nothing ever happens. And everywhere you look here in Nicaragua, they promised us a new baseball stadium. It's almost done. They promised us the largest hospital in Central America. It's already partially open and the rest of it's going to be open in no time. Uh, they promised us new parks. We have them. They promised us uh, the new road, the Pacific Coast Highway. It's partially built. That's going to take a while. It's not. Gonna... Everyone asks me every few weeks for an update on the building of a massive new highway that is expected to take a decade. Um, there's no update. They're inching forward. <laughs> Like that is going to be the update for years. So no need to ask. It's underway. It's been underway. Everyone knows it's underway. People have gone out to see it. It's super boring because it's got to start somewhere and it's going to be a long time before it connects interesting places together and is useful for anyone. But they're working on it. The airport is one of those pieces that is potentially going to happen pretty quickly. I mean, it's not fast to build a new international airport, but the runway is already there and functional and all they have to do is build the terminal. So yes, I understand the terminal is the harder portion of that, but the piece that is more you know, difficult to get approved or the space, just all that logistics is done and all they have left is the terminal. So while it may be the single individual largest piece, overall the project is well underway. And so when we got the new bus terminal here and people were doubtful, it's halfway done already. And that's, you know, I know that it's only so exciting because it's just dirt and structure, but it's going to be up very quickly. And you can see that. And we see the trucks just going, the construction crews constantly. And that's what we expect to see at Punta Huete now that they've broken ground. They're going to be moving very quickly because you don't make money when you're working on an airport. You need it to be actually be open and taking passengers. And so that's what they're racing to get to is to actually start bringing in tourists from a larger region. Or for some of us, hopefully providing a way for us to visit other places more easily. I'm really looking forward to finding out if this is going to give us direct connections to most likely Lima and Bogota. Those are the ones we're most interested in because we have a lot of anything closer than that. We already have connections to, but to the south, those two cities are the connections to the rest of South America. And to the east, we'd really like uh, or we're really hopeful that we will get direct connections to possibly Istanbul if Turkish decides to extend their flight paths uh, or to uh, Madrid, which is the most likely because we're the only country in the region not directly connected to Spain. And for obvious reasons, Spain is an important country for us to be connected to. If you are a Managua resident or a potential expat looking to move into Managua, this may sound like an amazing opportunity for you. But the reality is, is that if if you live in that city or Messiah, Granada, Hinotepe, Didiamba, Rivas, those cities are basically not going to care about this airport unless it gets those international flights that we don't have currently, in which case everyone's going to be just amazed by it. But more importantly, for regular flights, such as the Spirit flights going to Miami, the Avianca flights going to El Salvador and Florida, the United flights going to Texas and so forth, those flights are either going to stay in the regular Managua airport or you're going to prefer to take them from there. Nothing's really going to change. The Managua airport is better for Managua itself and the cities to the south and about equal for those to the east. That's Huigalpa, 
Bowako, and of course, if you're going really far afield, Blue Fields and those, they're gonna come right into Managua. They don't care about the new airport at all unless it offers new services. But for the rest of the country, Leon, Chinandega, Matagalpa, Esteli, Acatal, Hinotega, those cities to the north predominantly are going to find that Punta Hueta is a little bit easier to, to deal with because you don't have to deal with Managua traffic. You have more predictable travel times. It's a beautiful country drive instead of a city drive. Hopefully we'll get bus lines that go straight there and just it would be easy to have a shuttle that just goes to the airport and just zips, you know, Leon Airport, Madagalpa, Madagalpa Airport, Leon, and just go back and forth with one bus, and that would get people there on a pretty good basis. Um, so for us, it's it's potentially going to lower the cost, make it easier, make it a little bit faster. For those coming from, like, Esteli, it's a huge win. It's like an hour closer for them. Uh, for us, it's only a few minutes closer, but it's still an improvement, uh, us coming from Leon here. So we have a lot of hope that it's going to make the northern cities and the western cities uh, benefit a lot, whereas the southern and southeastern cities cities are basically going to see it as a nice extra feature, but nothing more than another option. Uh, they already have really good options. So having dual airports, of course, is nice because it just gives you, you know, if there's a, a weather event or something that affects one, the other may not be affected. I know when we flew out of here in 2015, I want to say that we actually had the volcano erupt right behind us by like two hours and they had to shut the airport, but it would only have shut Managua. It would not have shut Punta Huete. So having a backup because we do get clouds of ash from time to time in the country can be really good that there is a way to keep people traveling even if one of the airports experiences a little bit of a problem. These things aren't really scary. They just can't fly planes while there's ash in the air, right? So that's the kind of thing Thing that that will shut them down whereas a rainstorm normally they're able to fly without too much of a problem we really don't have very commonly weather delays for airplanes here in nicaragua often the places they're flying to have stronger weather events and they do have to do something but our airport here is relatively protected so it's not it's not generally too big of a deal for that but the volcanoes do present an ash problem that can hinder a lot of flights or mess with schedules quite a bit here in nicaragua we have high hopes for this new airport it is very exciting both with the things it potentially is going to bring us. We don't know exactly what benefits it's going to bring because we have to wait and see which airlines and what flight paths they decide to bring into it. And we're going to have to see exactly what it's like, what the costs are like and everything, what the travel times end up being once it's actually open. But the whole idea that there are big infrastructure projects like this going on in Nicaragua on a regular basis, that we have constant development happening, that there's real growth that you can see every single day, go out and see the country becoming more affluent, becoming more powerful, uh, having a massively revitalized economy is really exciting. For those of us who are here for the long haul, this stuff really matters. If you're here temporarily, it's a point of interest. If you're a tourist, this potentially makes Nicaragua an easier and more accessible place to be a tourist in. But for those of us who live here, these things are really good signs for the far future that we have so much to look forward to as Nicaragua really climbs out of a rough economic uh, position that it's been in for the last few decades. We are seeing so many signs that the, the country is overtaking other uh, countries in the region and really becoming a powerhouse in economic and infrastructure and, and other regards, uh, along with the interesting stuff that they're doing up in El Salvador. The region is really uh, kind of grabbing the gusto, as we would say, and, uh, and running with a lot of interesting projects that seem to hold a lot of potential for new growth and new opportunities in the future. Thanks for joining me here on on the vlog and on the show, uh, it's great to have everyone here. We just did an amazing live last night. I don't know when this will be going live, so I don't know when it was, but my wife has been joining me the last few weeks, and it's been so much fun to have her on the live show. We are going to be taking a couple weeks off from the live, which I think this is going to be in the middle of, but maybe not. And uh, uh, But we'll be back to it pretty soon. Thanks for joining us on that as well. If you haven't been on, we try to do it on Thursday nights. So look for us in late September to be back uh, doing the live show together. It's a great time to get on and ask your questions in real time or just meet up virtually with other people in the community. We have a, an awesome group of people who get on there and chat. Thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe. If you'd like to help support the channel and the work that we do here, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. That comes directly to me. It's like Patreon and helps us pay for the cameras and the tools that we use for editing and, and all that because uh, we do run at a loss here, but we would like to make a dollar or two. I'd like to be able to actually drink coffee from time to time. Just kidding. Obviously, I have a lot of caffeine to be able to do what I do because I talk a lot really fast. I'll see you all tomorrow.